I'm Josh. Um, I work at a consultancy called Theodo. Um, we're a digital agency that help people solve their business problems using computer science. And part of that is React Native and running this meetup. And today I want to talk about Monzo style magic links. And so I'm sure you've all seen Monzo. And for those of you that haven't, I'm going to jump into it now and show a quick tutorial or demo of it. So as you can see, you open the app. It's pretty pretty. Log in, type your email address. Click next. Have a nice loading animation while their server processes thousands of emails. Takes a little while. But it's quite a nice animation, so you let them off. This is one I had earlier. So you actually have to go back. So you have this lovely email from Monzo. You can click log in. Takes me to this page. Takes me back to the app and now logs me in. Takes a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna stand here. <laughs> and we're in. Um, it takes a little while to configure. I probably recorded it when I had mobile data. It's not the important part. Um, there we go, you can see my AWS, lovely. Cool, so what are the three things I want to talk about? One is like the different all flows. So, so here we saw Monzo's example, but there's actually lots of different things you can do. The second thing is deep links. And actually the majority of the magic is actually around how to configure deep links and passing parameters between them. And then thirdly is the alternatives. So like what, other, what are these other deep links you can use? That's using email, but can you use other things like text, Facebook Messenger, things like that. So let's jump straight into the all flows. So this is a very, very basic one. I thought I'd start very simple. Welcome to Josh Zoe, um, the new hip startup. We collect emails and that's about it. Um, so the first thing you can do is very simple auth. You can just have an endpoint, accept the email address, and gives you a lovely auth token, and you're in. Obviously, we don't want to do this. It's very insecure. Any user can log in as any other user. But it's a good first step. We actually are using email to log in. The second one we look at is like a code verification system. You may see, this is quite similar to like a text message thing. Um, so again, you hit slash auth, you post your email. This time you get just get an okay. And in the background, send you an email with an automatically generated code, which corresponds to your email. So you type in, yeah. So then we go over to here. You see my screen's now changed to actually enter your code in. Uh, this time I have a new endpoint, slash verify, where I pass my email and my code. And this time, I get my token. So it's a bit more secure. You know that the user has to have access to that email address to be able to log into your app. Ta-da, we're in again. So how can we be more complicated? How can we be a more seamless user experience than having to navigate to your emails, remember a code, navigate all the way, way back and type it in? So this is the first start into deep links. Um, again, we hit slash auth endpoint with our email. We know this by now, we get an okay. This time, the backend generates a little token. And we actually generate a link which we can click in our app and will, or in our email, sorry, and take us into our app. So this time, we're not entering a code, we're just clicking that simple link. And so the first thing, which we saw in Monzo, opens this little menu which says open in your app. In my case, Josh, so. And it has to pass around a URL parameter of the token. You then take the token and I'm authenticated. So just passing around the auth token in the URL parameters. Um, the alternative to this is actually there's one step better and that's using universal links or app links for Android and I'll come to that later. But it means that you can click the link and go straight to your app without this middle step of going through Safari. Um, cool, next. Cool, again. We're in our app. Okay, so this is the big one. This is the one we actually used on a project and I'll demonstrate the project at the end of the talk. So this time we hit slash auth. We've actually been smart in our app this time and we've generated a little token so that you, we know that the users come from this app that's open right now. Because in the previous examples, you could just click that link or know the code and type it in to any of the apps. This has to be specifically this device. Again, returns okay. Again, we generate another token this is not an auth token, this is a separate token. And with the way we know it's this user is we have a triple of 
this email code and token. That's that identity. Again, click here to link. This is the same as the previous example. Again, open in Josh So. But this time, rather than being logged in, we've only got this token. And we've got the code. So what do we do? We send it off to our slash verify link with the token and code, which then gives us our auth token. This means that at this point, we know that only that device and that user who has access to that email can log into the device. And so it's as good as a password. It's actually one step better than things like forget your password links, which are equivalent to doing the, uh, the second solution anyway. Again, you're in. Cool, so this is like quite a big a bit of content. Um, for those of you that have, don't know about deep links, they are remarkably just difficult to work with. So hopefully this clarifies a bit if you've tried to do, use them and stop because you've got lost in it. So basically, there are kind of three different types, URL schemes, universal linking, and app links. Um, so I'm going to talk about those three first, then talk about how we actually deal with that in the React Native world, as all of these three are all native land, and then talk about deep links as a service, which kind of alleviates the problems you have with the first three. So the first one is URL schemes. And this is what we saw when we saw the Monzo one. This open in Josh so is an example of using a URL scheme. And so they have the form of this thing at the bottom, Josh so forward slash, just like a normal URL. In fact, your um, browser can actually do this. I've changed the link in the background so it's not actually pointing to Josh so, but the link hyperlink points to Spotify. And you can see that it's prompting me at the top to open my Spotify on my computer. So this isn't just an app thing, this is a, a general um, like kind of web thing or app, like, um, can, what do I say, native app thing on your computer as well. Cool. I don't know why this arrows are nicely animated, but we'll take it. Cool. And so to add URL schemes, you have to change things in the Android manifest. You simply add this bit of code. And for iOS, you just simply add um, the um, like URL schemes. And you can see these in Xcode here. I have a demo. Can, is it going to work? Open my phone. Cool. So this is like the um, URL schemes in action. So I see my Josh so one. If I try and click that, nothing happens. But if I click my Facebook Messenger one, I go to get this prompt to go to Messenger. If I click go, go to Messenger. Um, I don't, Josh so doesn't work because my Josh so app doesn't exist, unfortunately. The second one is a hint to later. Ooh. There we go. Cool, so universal links. I gave a little hint here on my demo, but these are a standard URL, so they're not like my Josh so as like where HTTP would be. These are just websites. Um, so this would be www.joshso.com slash login. However, you need to require that you prove this domain. Otherwise, I could just say, OK, when people go on Google, load my app. Nobody really wants that. And so universal links, you have to configure an Xcode, and you have to use app links slash Josh So. App links just specifies the type of associated domain. There are different ones. Um, I won't go into them now. And you have to add it, add it to your entitlements file, and it adds it to the app ID on Dev Center. So it's a specific entitlement that comes with, bundled with um, your uh, app ID. Cool, and so you actually need to, if I was going to set up Josh So, universal linking, I'd need to, obviously I'd be using joshso.com. I need to set up an Apple site association, and you can actually look at these on anything that has deep link in their app. So for example, reddit.com slash Apple site association, you can see what they've got. For Josh So, I need it to look like this. I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but I'll make the slides available. And like, there are a few good guides on the internet, um, but I'll make this available on my GitHub afterwards so you can copy and paste this code. Um, that's probably the hardest part about doing this, is finding something that actually works. Um, yeah, and there's this the helpful tool by branch.io, which I'll talk about later as well. Um, the company, not the tool, but this will validate the Apple site associations for you and verify that it's doing exactly what you want it to do. Again, so here's the demo, the amazing universal links. If I click this, it takes me straight to it. Oh, no, no. The amazing demo. 
takes me straight to Facebook Messenger without prompting me. It says username not found because they have a scream, uh, sorry, a scheme which tries to search the username of that user. So no one has the usernames, Josh, so unfortunately. Um, might take it. Okay, so that was actually all for iOS. You may have noticed in my header, iOS only. So what do we do? If you're an Android user, and we do care about Android users, I swear, um, it works the same as Universal Links. And you, again, you just add it into your Android manifest, the same as um, URL schemes. But you still have to set up to verify your domain. This is quite similar, but it has to be .wellknown forward slash assets.json. You can actually put the Apple site config under .wellknown as well if that suits you. Again, it just tells, um, tells not actually your app, but tells Google Play that this URL relates to your app so that when you click a link in the rest of the operating system, it knows to then open your app. And you have to give a fingerprint of your um, Gradle store. So the secret Gradle store, you then have to, yeah, you provide a fingerprint so it knows it has to be that precise app more than iOS needs. iOS needs your team identifier and your bundle ID, which is kind of uniqueness. Cool, so that's, I've brushed through it quite quickly, but it is quite complicated to find on the internet. Um, so there are a few services that you can use. Um, you can use branch.io and Firebase. They're kind of two differently marketed tools. Branch.io is one for kind of using link attribution more generally, but they have a really good um, service that lets you, handles all the site associations for you, provides you some nice links like joshso.app.link, which isn't too bad. Um, so they handle attribution for you and you can customize them quite easily, which is quite nice. Um, and it has a really handy test dev mode. I don't know if any of you use Stripe, but it's the same dev experience of that. Really, really nice to use. Firebase, more of a service uh, based thing. Um, it can handle no notifications and a lot of your app authentication yourself. Um, it lets you actually have a login via email service so you don't have to do any of the back end work that you'd need to um, have for my nice little arrows and endpoints, which otherwise uh, can be tricky to implement. Okay, so now we finally only just got the app to open. We haven't even talked about any of the authentication part in the deep links. That's just getting it to open. Um, so we need to actually get these URL parameters that I mysteriously talked about before. And so you can include them in the URL and they get passed straight to the app and you can read them. And so to do this, you need to actually link the React Native linking library. Um, it's on the React Native web page. It's quite nice. It's all of this. I won't dwell on it, but you can find the guide here and it's perfectly, perfect, works perfectly well. Um, for services like branch.io, they have a similar readme. Um, it's very similar functions, but they link back into their own native library. And so we're finally, finally in JavaScript world. And actually, it's remarkably easy. It's just these two functions. So the first one handles deep links when the app is closed, and the second one ha handles like any other app launches. So when you come in via, um, um, uh, when the app's already open, you come, come into it. And you can just handle your login there. And in that, you get past the URL, so you can pass the URL parameters, compare it to your code, send it off to your backend. Cool. And that's me doing all of that stuff. Cool. So that's one example. Um, what are the alternative authors you can do? We've shown email. I've briefly talked about Facebook Messenger. So the reason I did this talk is because I implemented this using Facebook Messenger with a company called Clio. Um, We've worked for them for the last four weeks and built this app. They're actually going to be doing a, demonstra a deeper demonstration than I will of this app later on. So, just need to sort it from the App Store. Hopefully this isn't the part that breaks. Open it up. So this app's completely built in React Native. There was code pushing, in case you didn't believe me. If you don't already have a Messenger account, you can do the author using email. So here we go, into Messenger. So that actually provides a universal link into Messenger using an m.me link. And so the backend servers pick this up 
um, and notice that this user, me, has actually used this me.me link. In that deep link, we actually send something to the server in the back end. That's the token from the device that the device has generated. That's unique to my phone. The back end then actually generates a new deep link with a other code which matches the one I've sent up. And that's actually included in this waitlist me button. So when I click it, unfortunately, it's not a universal link. That's Facebook's fault. Um, so Facebook don't really want you to leave the app in a nice way and have a good user experience. So if it's in a web view and you have to use, it falls back to use the URL scheme. But I can click continue, go back to my app, and hopefully it logs me in. I'm in. This isn't because I've managed to log in successfully. There's the waitlist mechanic and I'm, uh, so because I developed it, I'm, I'm on. But you can see that I'm now here. Say hello, and I'll get a nice reply. And if you're here in a few weeks, I'm clear we're gonna come and talk at one of the next meetups um, to talk about the app further. Cool. So in summary, the really hard part about doing magic links is the deep linking. And so Monzo actually have their own web page which they link to and they constantly try and push you a, a, um, a URL scheme. So, so on the set, sorry, that's not explained very well. Um, on the deep link URL, if you don't get automatically shoved into the app, it force push it like it tries to redirect you to the scheme. So it basically forces you into the app, even if you've got things blocking it, like that Facebook Messenger one. That also has a fallback. If that was copied into Notes, um, like mine one was, I know the scheme. So if I clicked it, it would take me straight into Clio. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bit annoying, but it's, you can use these services like Branch.io and Firebase to try and alleviate some of these problems. We're actually using Branch.io, and that handles all of the fallbacks for us. Um, otherwise, it'd be quite a pain to implement. Um, and this just shows it can be quite easily, easy to create a good auth flow. Um, it's not too hard to bit link these native modules. The tutorials are pretty sound. Um, and you can easily transfer it to text or face and messenger based apps. That's the really cool part is that it's not tied down to email by doing this. You can use any form of like identity. Um, so if you trust that your user has one phone, you trust they have their phone, you can use text, WhatsApp, Slack, anything with basically an API to send a message, which is super cool. Cool, thank you. It's been short, but I wanted to give a brief introduction. <laughs>I oh, say so the question was, do you have any problems using it with the test mode in branch.io? And so with React Native, there can be problems. We actually have a really great setup for our staging and production environments. So we do different builds based upon this. Um, we use a thing called the BAM React Native Genera Toolbox. It's a really great tool, it sets up environments for you. Um, because of that, we can then split between the branch mode and the branch test mode and the live mode. And so we automatically inject in the keys when we build for production and staging. Um, so that's why it's been great for us. You should look, check it out.